uh, with Florent, Florencio Caballero, uh, a former member of Battalion 316. Caballero said CIA instructors taught him to discover what his prisoners loved and what they hated. If a person did not, not like cockroaches, then that person might be more cooperative if there were cockroaches running around the room. The methods taught in 1983 manual and those used by Battalion 316 in the early 1980s show unmistakable similarities. In 1983, Caballero attended a CIA Human Resources Exploitation or Interrogation course. According to the declassified testimony by Richard Stoltz, who was the Deputy Director for Operations at the time, before the June 1988 Senate Select Committee on Intelligence. The manual advises an interrogator to manipulate the subject's environment to create unpleasant or intolerable situations. And that is done to target individuals every day. And that is, that's, a, that's why um, you know, gang stalking is used, because they want to make uh, the subject's environment uh, intolerable uh, wherever they go. So they do use people, DHS fusion centers, and um, you know, InfraGuard to make every environment hostile um, so that you, you can never, uh, you know, you can never have uh, what humans need, equilibrium. So it keeps you uh, on the defense uh, and keeps that psychological regression going. The manual gives the suggestion that prisoners be deprived of sleep and food and, main to, and made to maintain rigid positions such as standing at attention for long periods. Inez uh, Consuelo Murillo, who spent 78 days in Battalion 316 secret jails in 1983, said she was given no food or water for days, and one of her captors entered her room every 10 minutes and poured water over her head to keep her from sleeping. The Human Resource Exploitation Training Manual, 1983, gives the suggestion that interrogators show the prisoners le prisoner letters from home to give the prisoner the impression that the imprisoner's relatives are in danger or suffering. The Baltimore Sun reported that former Battalion 316 member Jose Barrera said he was taught interrogation methods by U.S. instructors in 1983. Uh, the first thing we would say is that we know your mother, your younger brother, and better you cooperate because if you don't, we're going to bring them in and rape them and torture them and kill them. It's very pleasant. Okay, and then, and then there's a document here. It's just that it's another NSA PDF. Uh, basically, just for proof that the QBARC manual, um, you know, does exist. The NSA went through and did a huge uh, report on it. And you can go, you can just look up QBARC, uh, CIA QBARC, and it's like a couple of um, links down, really long. They go through it. Um, I kind of just want to show, I guess I, I might look up, might go through Project Phoenix real quick since I have some time on this one. I'm going to go Project Phoenix. And just read some uh, Ooh, I have a low battery. How am I not? Oh. Hold on one second, guys. Bring that down here. That's why I was heating up. Uh, the Phoenix. I guess it's not Project Phoenix. I guess it's the Phoenix program in Vietnam. Program. Phoenix program. Here we go. Okay, I do want to read this. I'm going to... Okay, good. It's in big text, so I can get some of it in the picture. Um, so the Phoenix program uh, uh, do, 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 was a program designed, coordinated, and executed by the United States Central Intelligence Agency, United States Special Operations Forces, U.S. Army Intelligence Collection uh, units from a MACV, Special Forces, Special Forces operatives from the Australian Army Training Team Vietnam, and the Republic of Vietnam's, the South Vietnam security apparatus during the Vietnam War. The program was designed to identify and neutralize via infiltration, capture, counterterrorism, interrogation, and assassination the infrastructure 
of the National Liberation Front of South Vietnam, NLF or Viet Cong. The CIA described it as a set of programs that sought to attack and destroy the political infrastructure of the Viet Cong. The major two components of the program were provincial reconnaissance units and regional interrogation centers. PRUs would kill or capture suspected NLF members, as well as civilians who were thought to have information on NLF activities. Many of these people were then taken to interrogation centers and were tortured in an attempt to gain intelligence on VC activities in the area. The information extracted at the centers was then given to military commanders, who would use it to task the PRU with further capture and assassination missions. The program was in operation between 1965 and 1972, and similar efforts existed both before and after that period. By 1972, Phoenix uh, operatives had neutralized 81,740 suspected NLF operatives, informants, and supporters, of whom between 26,000 and 41,000 were killed. History uh, the interrogation centers and PRUs were developed by the CIA's uh, Saigon Station Chief, uh, Pierre de Silva. De Silva was a proponent of a military strategy known as counterterrorism, which encompasses military tactics and techniques that the government, military, law enforcement, and intelligence agencies use to combat or prevent terrorist activities, and that it should be applied to strategically to enemies, and that it should be uh, applied strategically to enemy civilians in order to reduce civilian support for the Viet Cong. The PRUs were designed with this in mind and began targeting suspected VC members in 1964. Originally the PRUs were known as counter-terror teams but they were renamed to provincial reconnaissance units after CIA officials became wary of the adverse publicity surrounding uh, the use of the word terror. In 1967, all pacification efforts by the United States had come under the authority of Civil Operations and Revolutionary Development Support, or CORDS. CORDS had many different programs within it, including the creation of a peasant militia, which by 1971 had a strength of about 500,000. In 1967, as part of CORDS, the Intelligence uh, Coordination and Exploitation Program was created. From a plan drafted by Nelson Brickham, partly inspired by David uh, Galula's Counterinsurgency Warfare, 1964, a book based on Galula's experiences in the Algerian War, which Brickman was very taken with and carried with him around Vietnam. The purpose of the organization centered on gathering information on the NLF. It was renamed Phoenix later in the same year. The South Vietnamese program was called Phong Hoang, after a mythical bird that appeared as a sign of prosperity and luck. The 1968 Tet Offensive showed the importance of the NLF infrastructure and the military setback for the U.S. made it politically more palatable for the new program to be implemented. By 1970, there were 704 U.S. Phoenix advisors throughout South Vietnam. Officially, Phoenix operations uh, continued until December 1972, although certain aspects continued until the fall of Saigon in 1975. And I think I'm going to just read operations um, and kind of wrap it up. Um, the chief aspect of the Phoenix program was the collection of intelligence information. NLF members would then be neutralized, captured, converted, or killed. Emphasis for the enforcement of the operation was placed on local government, militia, and police forces rather than the military as the main operational arm of the program. Author, poet, and journalist Douglas Valentine states that central to Phoenix is the fact that it targeted civilians, not soldiers. So author, poet, and journalist Douglas Valentine states that central to Phoenix is the fact that it targeted civilians, not soldiers. Neutralization took place under special laws that allowed the arrest and prosecution of suspected communists. To avoid abuses, abuses such as phony accusations for personal reasons, or to rein in overzealous officials who might not be diligent enough in pursuing evidence before making arrests. The laws required three separate sources of evidence to convict any individual target for neutralization. If a suspected NLF member was found guilty, he or she could be held in prison for two years, with renewable two-year sentences totaling up to six years. According to MACV Directive 381-41, the intent of Phoenix was to attack the NLF with a rifle shot with a rifle shot 
rather than a shotgun approach to target key political leaders, command control elements, and activists in the VC and activists in the VC Viet Cong infrastructure. Um, Heavy-handed operations such as random cordons and searches, large-scale and lengthy detentions of innocent civilians, and excessive use of firepower had a negative effect on the civilian population. Intelligence derived from interrogations was often used to carry out search-and-destroy missions aimed at finding the enemy and destroying them. And then I'll read this, this about reported torture. Uh, methods of reported torture that author Douglas Valentine wrote were used at the interrogation centers included rape, gang rape, rape using eels, snakes, or hard objects, and rape followed by murder, electric shock, rendered by attaching wires to the genitals or other sensitive parts of the body like the tongue, the water treatment, the airplane in which the prisoner's arms were tied behind the back, and the rope looped over a hook on the ceiling, suspending the prisoner in midair, after which he or she was beaten, beatings with rubber hoses and whips, the use of police dogs to maul prisoners. Military intelligence officer K. Barton Osborne reports that he witnessed the following use of torture. The use of the insertion of the six-inch dowel into the canal of one of my detainee's ears and the tapping through the brain until dead. The starvation to death in a cage of a Vietnamese woman who was suspected of being part of a local political education cadre in one of the local villages. Wow, the starvation to death in a cage of a Vietnamese woman who was suspected of being part of a local political education cadre in one of the local villages. The use of electronic gear such as sealed telephones attached to both the women's vaginas and the men's testicles to shock them into submission. <sighs> the reported torture was carried out by South Vietnamese forces with the CIA and special forces playing a supervisory role. Um, so I'm going to stop there, guys. Um, I just want to show I just want to show a precedent for this kind of behavior and these kind of actions, this kind of torture, um, experimentations in, in some, um, in some examples, and then just playing out torture, uh, of civilians and other examples in, in the history of the CIA and, uh, certain agencies in the United States. Um, just want to kind of give non-TIs and, and real cynics, um, you know, and I'm sure that, you know, a lot of TIs have, have studied, um, you know, the history of torture, mind control, experimentation, um, and targeting um, in the United States history and other countries', countries history. But it is good information uh, to put under our belts, uh, you know, guys, um, guys who are, guys and gals who are targeted like me. Um, it's good information to know about, to research, um, so that we can give people, and, you know, I find it ridiculous that we have to prove something that so many people are testifying to, uh, are giving their testimonies, and, and we need it to stop because it's murdering us, and, but we have to, you know, set precedents and kind of make a case for, hey, hey, look over here, this is happening, because everybody's kind of, you know, uh, not, not aware of, of information that, you know, Governments do very heinous things uh, to their citizens sometimes. Um, but okay, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up there. I'm just kind of, you know, uh, going through some of the history of some of the awful things, awful things um, that governments have done, that our government, the American government, has done in particular, um, to kind of say, hey, wake up, people. Um, this has happened before. Um, and, you know, target targeted individuals, uh, survivors of this experimentation. We need the public's help. We need the public to say no with us and to, to do activism with us and to, you know, uh, hold our, our leaders accountable for, for not doing anything about this um, and let our the leaders who don't know know about this. We need your help. I mean, I'm being murdered on a daily basis along with other targeted individuals, um, you know, torture on levels that are just unimaginable. Um, but all right, guys, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm getting to 30 minutes. I'm going to stop it there, but uh, more to come for the November video marathon. Um, and God is behind us, guys. We're getting close. You know, a lot more people know about this, and, and we're just going to keep getting closer. So hang in there and stay strong. 
And God bless you guys. I love y'all, and I'll see you on the next one.